What we're here to do today is I got a Hummingbird Helix 10 HD side imaging to install. And I want to show you all how to do it. I work with uh, Hummingbird, you know, I'm on their staff and all. Uh, good company. And man, I'll tell you, their HDI imaging is second to none. The clarity, the definition, I was so impressed. Um, I, I've been dying to have one and I finally got one. So, you know, be patient. I know they're building these things to order, they tell me. You know, very back ordered and such. But anyway, let's, uh, let me show you what I got here. All right, so there's the box. So let's open this bad boy up and let's get her installed. We're gonna start with running the transducer, hooking up the power, and then uh, I'm not gonna do an in dash mount. I'm just gonna do the bracket. So I gotta make a little room on my dash to put this thing in there. All right, let's get going. Here it is in the flesh, opening this bad boy up. Ooh, easy little buddy. And look, they got a nice rubber uh, rubber cover on it, a little flex, real nice, soft as opposed to the old hard covers. What we got going um, is we got the old transducer and the new transducer right here. Here's the new one. Now what we're gonna do is I got a chase or a string on the end of my old transducer. So we're gonna pull it through and then we're gonna put the new transducer on the string, wrap it in tape and pull it back through. All right, so I got the transducer coming through here. Oh, there's the old one. Oh, there's the string. So we're going to take this string, we're going to put it onto the new transducer, and we're going to pull it back through the same way. Sometimes it helps. We always wrap it in tape, and then sometimes I'll put like a little bit of soap on it, like Dawn or something, help it slide through everything good to get it up to the dash. <laughs> All right, y'all. So we got the old transducer wire and the string I ran for a chase. I'm just going to cut it off. It's actually still good. I'm going to save it, maybe give it away, put it on another boat. No, I'm just going to cut it with my Denkos. We got the new transducer wire. Okay, it's got a nice cap in it, which probably a good thing to leave in there while I do this. And then uh, you can just tie an overhand knot, you know. You want to be careful not to rip this wire. You got to be gentle with it. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a loop here like this, and then I wrap it inward. It's like a, kind of like a form of a uni knot. I forget what it's called. But what I do is I wrap it down, then I take the tag end and put it back through the loop. And then I pull it tight. It's like maybe it's a, a sinks knot. I, I know a lot of knots in my head, and I've forgotten most of them between fishing and captain school and everything else in my life. And I even took some Coast Guard safety training when I was a kid. So many weird knots in my head. I do not remember the name too. But anyway, look how it's nice and cinched on there. Okay. But what I the important part here is that you don't damage this because this is what's getting your signal to your unit. <clears throat> so now that I got that on there and it's pulling good and straight like that. I get some type of tape. I usually use like a painter's tape. And see, I'll make it nice and straight and smooth. Um, I'll show you, you're gonna see. So we wrap it up, and wrap it, and wrap it, and wrap it. And one reason I like to wrap all of it, see like even the backside, is because sometimes when you're pulling stuff, you hear the kids in my neighborhood, it gets stuck. And you wanna be able to pull it backwards to free it up. So that's the back side and look how nice and it's got like a tapered smooth edge to it and then i do the front side make sure your caps on there good so it's protected the ropes nice and straight string coming out of it and you this is like paracord you want to make sure it's pretty pretty hardy string not too thick but strong so that you you don't want it to break inside your boat and then have to rechase a string or something through it to get it out the other side but see i'm just you know use a little more tape it's all right See, now we got nice tapered and to pull through. And we're going to pull it through like this. And, you know, I just put some soap on it. And it makes it a lot slicker in case there's something that gets hung up on. A little bit of down on there. Goes a long way. We're just going to goob it all up and pull it on through. Well, here's the new transducer and there's the old transducer right there so we're going to remove that one we got this cable for the new transducer and all the way up to the dash we're going to remove the old transducer wire it's already pulled through and then we're going to set this up to mount now when you mount these new transducer you want it to be level with the ground okay like that not level with the boat on an angle okay so you want to have it level with the ground and at the base of the boat, nice and even. I'll show you when we get there. See, like this one's beat up, actually glued it at one point, but you don't want it too far down. 
you want it right about level with the boat. Now, if it's below the hole, it's too far. So we don't want it below the hole. We want it like right here, even, okay? You can get a different perspective. It's gotta be even with the bottom of the boat, but not on an angle with the bottom of the boat, level with the ground, all right? So let's get to this. I'm gonna get mounting it up and remove the old one first. All right, now this old one just has some screws in it. Here's the one main screw in the middle. And you gotta seal these, you can't leave these open. So if there is a hole in your transom, you gotta seal it with some epoxy or you gotta put some 5200. A lot of times I'll put a screw with 5200 back in the hole, but uh, you know I recommend you mix a two-part epoxy with maybe a filler like Millings or a Cavasil and then fill the holes to make them watertight. But if you're doing the epoxy, you gotta make sure the transom is very dry or the epoxy will delaminate and it won't adhere. So anyway, we're just ripping these out. There's a couple more screws underneath it, right there. Of course, they're flatheads, so I gotta go grab a flathead and work on this now. So we're just on the main mounts for this old transducer. We're just screwing them out. And then we're gonna set up the new transducer, but we gotta make sure these holes from the old screws are filled. There's one, look at that big old screw we're taking out of there. See a little rust on them, you know, they're stainless, not stain proof. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, now a big thing with mounting a transducer, so there's the old holes and everything right there. I'll show you them in a sec. But a big thing is, if you have it over here, too close to the engine, like if it's too close to the engine, it'll cause air bubbles and the engine will suck in the air um, and it'll overheat the engine. So you gotta have it, you want it level with the ground, level with the ground, okay? You don't want it level with the boat. If it's level with the boat hull, it'll be crooked. So it's gotta be level with the ground. And then you want it even with the bottom of the boat, just off to the side of the engine, either the port side or the starboard. But, you know, within, you know, I say, you just try to make sure the engine won't hit it and that it's not in front of the engine creating a bubble trail. So we're gonna go ahead and fill these holes and then we are going to set up the new transducer. All right, y'all, I'm just gonna clean up the surface and then I'm gonna try to use some of these existing holes um, so I don't have to drill. You know, you don't want a bunch of holes in your transom. So I'm gonna try to Make sure all of them are sealed up with some 5200 and they're level. <coughs> Let me try to make sure they're all sealed up with 5200 and level. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and mount the new transducer. Like I said, the biggest thing is that it's level like that with the bottom of the boat. Because then it'll get an even uh, reading correctly because it's got the side scan. All right, we put some silicone on there just to seal up them holes and i'm just going to start with this mount in the middle and then we will drill the other holes around it because we'll use this to address the height of where we put the transducer once we mount it all right, it looks pretty stinking good. All right, and then uh, let's go ahead and put uh, the other mount on the other side of this transducer. All right, so this is the mount right here that's gonna go on the transducer. It's gotta line up these holes. Ooh, there we go. Well, that was work, getting that screw started. Anyway, we got, what, uh, six of these to put in, and then we can uh, put the mount onto the boat and adjust it so we got the one in right there and then we're going to finish them up all right y'all we got all the screws in here i'm just going to tighten them down now all right so let's get these all tightened what we want to do is get the height right so that this will be level with the bottom of the boat nice like that all right i'm gonna go through there's a couple bolts we're going to put in there and we're going to adjust it and screw it in. All right, y'all, we got it where we want it. I'm gonna put these tie wraps on here um, to secure it right here in the old uh, the old holes right there. So we're gonna have them right there. 
and there's another one above it right there to hold the wire in place. And then we're just gonna tighten this down right here so that it's level with the bottom of the boat and we will be ready to go. There you go, y'all. That looks good. Nice and even with the bottom of the boat. We gotta mount two more screws there to permanently mount it. And then we got zip ties up there to hold them in place. We gotta get another screw, put one in there, and we are done. All right, y'all, day two. Oh, it's just is hot outside. We finishing today. Anyway, here's the power leads. I'm gonna show you right here in a sec. So there's the power leads. We got heat shrink uh, connectors for the um, power leads, all right? If you look at them, what I did is I put the open end ones, so they're going to go into a fuse block. The red power lead is going to be fused, the black is going to ground, under the dash, in a fuse, all right? Or you could put an inline fuse, whatever you want to do. But I left the open end connections so that I just have to back the screw out on the fuse block and slide them on. All right, y'all, so my dash has had a lot of units on it and a cup holders. Got a cup holder here we're moving. And we have this unit here. We're going to mount it right there. We got it marked. We got the wires going through for the transducer and the power. All right, looks like there's four screw holes with textures in there also. We're just marking them. We marked them already. Just wanted to score them. All right, looks like they require a four screw mount. We're just going to get it tapped in there. Now, when you're drilling fiberglass, if you're in an area you care about, you always back drill it so the fiberglass doesn't chip. As you see, as you see my dash is in uh, need of a little love already, either re-glassing and painting or a piece of starboard to fix it up. But we just wanted to get those two guide holes going in there. We're going to hook everything up, make sure it's working before we finish up. Looks good. Let's put some bolts in there and try it out. All right, so we're just going to tighten these down. It's actually an 8 millimeter or 5 sixteenths or a flathead. Makes it quite convenient. So we're going to go ahead and tighten that down with our whistle. The whistle <laughs> helps. There's a whistle we're hitting. It's good. Good times. Thanks, Mr. Bill. So this was, it looked like it should work. A little better to be tight. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're getting that mounted down. We're going to go ahead and um, mount our cup holder next that we ripped that way to move it over a little bit. You want to put a little... Yeah, I guess. See. All right, so these little Teflon-looking washers go on the mounts. It's rubber. Rubber, yeah. whatever. Right there for the machine. We hooked it up backwards. We're going to have to move it. It'll probably work. We might leave it that way. We're kind of lazy like that. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. And then we got to put a little clamshell, cover up our hole right there in the back, fill our screw holes, and then uh, took the. Hey y'all! So Minkota, Minkota Johnson Outdoors Hummingbird today uh, makes this cool little quick release plug for the back. You got two Phillips head screws, and then each cable will go into a certain slot there and hold it in place for a quick release on your unit, right here in the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right there in the back. And it just goes right onto our mount there. Yep. All right, well, let's put those cables in there. All right, so Mr. Bill's here. He's sweating. putting it together. We're sweating our butts off. They're all directional. Luckily, all the cables are different. So they all have to go a specific way to fit in there, which is good. So less less chances of us screwing it up. So we're popping them up in there, and then we put the cover back on. Now we're putting the power side, uh, we put the uh, power side in, now we're putting the transducer side in. All right, let's make sure it's in there good and that the mounts are all the way up top so that they have a good connection in the unit. Also good if you put a little de-electric on the plugs to insulate them and protect them. I do like the de-electric. De-electric's good. See my boat's filthy, right? Look at all the crap, we gotta bleach and scrub it afterward. I just wanna test it. Man. Yeah, see, it plugs right in. Beautiful. We'll just put the cover back on there, put the Phillips back in place, and uh, we'll be in business. All right, see the cover pops back on there. Two small Two Phillips. small Phillips heads. Yeah. 
and we're in business. We're gonna plug this thing in and check it out. All right, we got all the cables hooked up. We're gonna wind them up down underneath there. We'll get a little clamshell to put over the hole in the back just to protect it right there. All right, the little uh, quick disconnect plug harness is right there. And we're gonna test this thing out. Hummingbird looks like it goes up top. Like so. Nice. All right, we got the unit in. Just screwing the mounts in right there to make sure it's secure. And we're gonna power it up. We'll fix the wires in the back a little later and tidy them up with some zip ties, tie wraps. But uh, here we are, all nice and powered. They got this nice flexible cover on it. it looks beautiful. Ooh, shiny new and plasticky. <clears throat> oh, look at that. Ready to roll. Helix 10 Hummingbird. HDI imaging. All right, y'all. So there we are. There's our chart map. We got to upload our charts. But there we are. Right there. Found us right in Palm City. Palm City, Florida. Home sweet home. The river right there that I love to fish. All right, y'all. Got the new Helix 10 out here. Checking out some of my favorite areas of the river. Look at all that fallen timber. Wow. Just look at the definition on this thing. It is amazing. So happy I got this. Man, you got to see just the clarity of what you can see in your favorite fishing spots and where the fish are laying pretty cool stuff y'all thanks for watching this uh, installation is complete